checkmate. Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is a follow-up of the previous video about the situation between France and Niger. And um, Niger have made the, their next move and basically they closed the airspace to French airline and military aircraft and essentially checkmated the, the French. And what the French do, basically this, this, this closure of, of the airspace is only to French only French in, uh, airlines and military aircraft. Everyone else in the whole world can fly over Niger. Only the French cannot. And so this is the checkmate. And there is no... As I mentioned, the, the French have run out of uh, options. They don't really have... They have been outplayed entirely by the Niger uh, junta. And uh, unexpectedly, uh, or maybe predictably, depending on where you stand, um, France surrender. France has officially surrendered Niger and they have ordered the military withdrawal of the French troops, 1,500 of them from Niger by the end of this year and basically bowing to the demands of the junta. So this 1,500, uh, previously they have rejected a uh, September the 3rd uh, deadline to withdraw from Niger and uh, now, now he said that he will consult with the Puchis, which is actually uh, the the cool the cool leaders, basically the junta, and uh, they say that they will make this happen peacefully. So Macron has went from no, we will never negotiate with all these no illegal government or illegitimate government to we will not consult them and so that we can peacefully leave Niger, and uh, this is announced on the French television TF1 and France 2, and uh, he also on. He also mentioned about the redraw of the ambassador. So he said that uh, the military cooperation between uh, Niger and France is over. There is no more cooperation and there will be uh, in the months and weeks to come a full pullout by the end of the year. So uh, now it's September, we're coming to October. So October, November, December, that's around three months for them to redraw. Uh, pretty much the time frame that you will probably expect, you know, realistic. Uh, really, uh, realistically speaking. So, uh, like I mentioned just now, uh, France also pulled its ambassador, but the ambassador is going to be a lot faster. According to uh, Macron, he said that they decided to bring back his ambassador. Uh, possibly, you know, you know, the ambassador has uh, threatened on the hunger strike. You know, he's like, what are you doing to me? You know, why you keep leaving me in this uh, you know, God for second country eating military ration. I'm going to have a hunger strike because I'm running out of military ration. And, and uh, basically, yeah, he will be returning with several diplomats back to France. And and it's quite sad because they, they literally cannot uh, deliver food into the embassy. embassy. Basically, this is an untenable situation. So, you no, know, unless the French use their troops and um, you no know, force themselves into the embassy, there's no way they can actually feed the ambassador so it seems like a like i said you know it's a checkmate there's nothing much they can do unless they go to war and of course they're not going to go to war over one ambassador uh at least you know this uh, sylvan ite is not worth going to war for okay so this is going to be the funny, funny part mohammed bazoum uh, the the disposed president of niger basically uh his aide ali sikor ramadan basically told that Associated Press that it is Bazoum that actually requested Macron to redraw the French ambassador in order to reduce tension. The... What? 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 Okay, whatever. It makes no sense to me. You no. Know? So anyway, um, so previously there was a deadline. You know, if you have followed the previous reports, you probably probably know that the France, uh, France have actually go against the deadlines uh, imposed by the the junta. And uh, yeah, then come all this drama that ended up with uh, France losing. So Macron said that we are not here to be hostages of the Putschis. The Putschis are the allies of disorder. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so you no, know, because they are the regime of disorder, they they reacted to this news, you know. They reacted by being a... Uh, um, eh? Oh, sorry. It should be this one first. They, they reacted by welcoming this... Uh, 
announcement no because they are you no know, they they are the authorities of disorder so this sunday we celebrate a step towards the sovereignty of a disorder niger i mean niger so this is a historic disorder moment i mean uh, historic moment and he will speak to the determination and the will of the nigerian people uh, so yeah this come after france also given up mali and burkina faso basically evacuated from the entire region the sahel region and yeah this is a uh, great news uh, if you are on the side of the you know, anti neo colonial colonialism uh, group of people or the anti french people or the anti west people this is this is actually great news but if you are french and you really care about uh, the prestige of your country this is one hell of a horrible news so the Niger, uh, the government also reacted. Uh, just now that one was like the announcement of happiness, you no. Know? But then, in the more official terms, they say that they are still awaiting for the official uh acts from the French authorities following this announcement by the president. So he's uh the military regime basically said that there need to be a, a negotiated framework, uh in order to coordinate the withdrawal of the French troops. And also, they also highlighted that there's no sign of the French ambassador. Sylvian Ite has left the residence in Niamey just yet. So um, so the, the reaction is still still a bit fast we still haven't seen any news about the ambas the french ambassador ambassador leaving also there is a problem because niger have closed the airspace to french aircraft so there there is no french way of leaving the country so there might be there must be some kind of other ways to leave the country and also because the the, the embassy is actually uh encircled basically surrounded and uh, closed off to uh entrance and exit so i'm not sure how they're going to be arranging this uh evacuation or redrawal of this ambassador just yet you know, there's a lot of question that still needs to be asked and uh, and to be resolved so uh, macron you know, feeling very uh you no know, emo he said that uh, jihadist attacks have uh, caused dozens of death every day in mali you know after the coup you no know, such a, such uh, attacks has resumed in Niger as well, so he's very worried about this region. You no know, France, France, you no know, is so poor thing. You no, know, sometimes they are alone, taking all this responsibility all on their own, and he's very proud of his military. And uh, but he is he said that you no, know, France is not responsible for the political life of these countries. Uh, so you no, know, all this support for Bazoum makes no sense. Like you know, he's safe for fun only. You no, know, because he don't really he's not responsible for the political life of these countries. So he 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 said that uh the French will draw all the consequences uh, of it, which also means uh buying uh, buying uranium at two hundred uh euros per kilogram. So. So the um, France will then have to decide how, what to do with the embassy because uh, after they evacuate, uh, they will then have to do something with the embassy. Then uh, so far, yeah, uh, so far the spokeswoman uh, for the president also mentioned that uh, they will continue anti-terrorism activities in Africa, but they did not mention how they will do it. So. So let's see how this goes. Maybe the anti-terrorism is depending on uh, how you define terrorism and who are the terrorists. Like maybe the Niger junta is the terrorist and uh, maybe French will then use the terrorist, uh, the, 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 the worst terrorist against the worst terrorist. No, the bad terrorist against the worser, uh, the better terrorist. Yeah, no, like, like the Americans really love to do in Syria. And uh, in the other news, uh, we have um, the United Nations situation. Uh, United Nations did a very weird uh, thing to Niger. Uh, at least I'm talking about the, the junta. And basically, they did not allow the, the representative of Niger to talk. But they, they didn't allow both sides to talk. It, the previous government and the, this new government, both they don't allow them to talk. Um, so, so the so but then there was this very weird thing. The former, uh, foreign minister, the the foreign minister of the disposed government actually sent a letter to the United Nations to, to terminate the position of, 
they are ambassador to the United Nations. Basically, this guy called Bakari Yao Sangare. And uh, so, uh, not these two guys. And uh, nobody knows who's, who's, who are these two guys, actually. And um, so, so, the, so, so the former foreign minister terminated this ambassador to UN. Okay, makes sense, right? Makes sense. But what, what doesn't make sense is that this same ambassador to the United Nations was actually keeping his position under this new government. And in fact, he is also a, appointed as the foreign minister for the, this new government. So this ambassador to the United Nations of the former government has now promoted to the foreign minister for this new government. And, this, and he will also be the representative at the United Nations, who is then terminated by the previous gov government. As a result, he cannot talk and speak for Niger. Do you get it? So um, I'm sure you can because you are so smart. Then uh, basically, uh, the Secretariat of the United Nations received a letter signed by the Foreign Minister of DJ, which is the previous one, and uh, informing the end of the Mr. Bakari as the permanent representative of DJ to the United Nations. And then they were pro they processed it. But the problem is, the United Nations position by right now is that there is no legitimate government right now. No, the government is, DJ basically is in limbo. He, he, they are not exactly supposed to be processing this. So in, in essence, by processing this request, they are indirectly recognizing the previous government, thus intervening into the internal politics of Niger. And uh, this is not what the United Nations are supposed to do. So, so um, as a result, uh, this actually puts United Nations in line with ECOWAS and the African Union, uh, that declares that the previous government is the legitimate one and task you no know, uh taking aside put it that way so uh yeah this this is a extremely weird situation that's uh facing niger right now and i think the the junta made a very uh prudent you know decision by keeping the same ambassador and making him the foreign minister this person can actually best uh, no, they don't have to deal with the logistic about of this person, and this person can also help to speak. And in fact, the fact that this this ambassador will, is willing to become the foreign minister for this new junta is also very very interesting. Maybe they spoke about it, and he actually agreed to do it. You know, who do wants a uh, who do wants actually a promotion? So no, um, so predictably, the Niger leader actually uh, slammed the United chief United Nation chief. He said that this. Is a inter the this is a weakness you no know, by the international community of these uh, perfidious actions of the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. So uh, I I went to Google what this word means. Basically, this word means that uh, you say you're going to do something, but you are you actually is already plan to do something else. So like you are you are being a hypocrite. So uh. He said Guterres went astray in the exercise of his mission by obstructing Niger's full participation in the 78th session of the UN General Assembly. And uh, basically, uh, so he said that uh, the Guterres did not only refuse to take note of this official list of delegates from Niger, but also, you know, acceded to the fanciful request, you know, of the <laughs> fanciful, you no, know, like, you no, know, they put a lot of flowers on this request and they put raw rainbows and sunshine and you know, uh, kittens on it. No, so very fanciful. Then, um, so on from this uh, former foreign minister, uh, Hasomi Masaldo, which wh whom if I didn't remember wrongly, I reported that he actually ran away to Ghana. So, yeah, to revoke the permanent re representative of the Niger to the United Nations. So, yeah, so definitely Niger is not very not not very happy about this. This makes no sense to them. Uh, but but it makes entire sense for United Nations. So UN actually explained uh, this situation about Niger's representative uh, representation in the, the United Nations. So uh, they they say that the good uh, so the Guterres spokesman uh, Stefano Dujaric basically say that Bakari was not accredited to attend. Uh, because the for the disposed foreign minister actually sent uh, UN the letter to inform the end of his function. But in the event of competing credentials of a member state, then uh, they, the Secretary General actually will defer the division to the credentials committee, which, went, which then will decide on this matter. The Secretary General do, does not decide on this matter, but he said that this committee cannot 
meet to decide on this matter. So no, there's no as 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 a result, there's no representative from Niger to be added to the list of speakers. So this this is actually kind of a uh, it really depends on how you want to cut this cake because it can it can read it as no UN is just doing their job you know but you can also read it as they are deliberately accepting the termination of this uh, former government uh, to make it difficult for this current government so from the looks of it the, I'm not entirely sure how to read this in uh, I mean, it, it really can go both ways, you know, the, the, because the, the, you have to look at it as this current, this ambassador is actually appointed by the previous government. So the previous government uh, terminating their own people makes sense. And the current government is not recognized by the United Nations just yet. So if they appoint this, this ambassador, even if it's the same person, it cannot be recognized by the United Nations just yet. You need to go through the committee to decide whether, you no. Know, is, is this a legitimate person uh, or a legitimate representative of this country? So, yeah, you know, maybe United, United Nations uh, have done it the uh, safer way, I guess. And uh, the most happiest person, you know, of all this is United States. Guess what? The French re ordered the redrawal over the next three months. By the end of the year, they would withdraw out of Niger. But there is still foreign forces within Niger, and which is the United States. The United States will still have 1,100 military personnel. And um, according to the US Defense Secretary, Lloyd Austin, he said that uh, he's, they are trying to give diplomacy a chance. And uh, they will continue to evaluate future steps to prioritize both diplomatic and security goals. So uh, this, he stressed that uh, United States have not made any significant change to the force posture and they want to see a diplomatic solution, a peaceful end to this crisis. And uh, they and I also mentioned in the previous report, they are doing some redeployment uh, to, to run away from Niamey in case that uh, there is some conflict that will break up between ECOWAS and Niger. And they go far, far away to the Agadez uh, region. And uh, so they will do an assessment on what it means for France to rejoice troops from Niger. But right now, they will focus on continuing that uh, move from Niamey to this uh, Agadez air base. And, and don't you find it uh, weird that the United States are still there and the Niger have no complaints uh, about the United States staying in their country. But they have a lot, a lot of problems with the French troops in Niger this is absolutely wild and so no the i think the celebration is not just in niger but I'm, I'm quite sure that there's a lot of celebration in the in in uh, the washington dc as well uh as far as i can tell because this is a geopolitical coup coup not not cool like coup for the united states to assert their control and influence onto another country that used to be under the French control, so the so the job uh, so you have to look at this uh, in a few ways as well because France uh, basically you know surrendering uh, Niger is is an easy way to look at it, but France will France just leave entirely because they did mention a uh, very important that you no know, they. They are the reason, Macron actually emphasized that they are the reason that they are keeping the jihadis at bay. And and, they, and he emphasized that uh, without the French around, these countries um, like Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, Niger will not be able to deal with the jihadis. Of course, they, uh, he's totally ignoring that the Americans are around. They are totally ignoring that the Wagner forces are around. So, no, but no. Without the French, the, the these countries will not be able to deal with the jihadis, which then puts into the question, would the French empower the jihadist forces by arming them, you know, providing them with uh, more weaponry and ammunition and something to create more trouble to prove a point that without the French around, the security situation in the Sahel will get worse. This is almost something that I would you know, really put you know, put into question and really want to take a further look and I uh, you know to keep this observation of the situation within the Sahel because I don't think the fr I think this is a massive defeat 
for the French to to give up yet another country in the Sahel region, and and I don't think the French will take this very well, especially if they leave entirely, they lost entire control of the region, they they lost you know diplomatic influence and pressure on the governments, which makes them unable to negotiate a better deal for the resources that they want. And Niger not just have uranium, there's also other valuable resources that you know, the French really want to keep control. But they're now losing the control and they're going to pay the market price. Not the high price, it's just a market price for the uranium. And uh, this is going to be disastrous for the local politics within France because energy prices likely will have to increase. French is already having a lot of problems with their nuclear power plant. And now with an increasing price of the uranium is going to make it worse for France to deal with their nuclear uh, power needs. And uh, for Niger, this is just the beginning. This is a huge victory for this junta, for the people of Niger uh, to to really move on away from the their colonial past. But like all colonies that leave their colonial masters, the key is to fight the corruption, the power-hungry uh, people, and uh, people who want to know who are more selfish. This is the main battle. If they if they can defeat uh, the the desire to you know put self interest ahead of the country, they can if they can prevent this from happening, then they will have a better future. Because Niger is a very resource rich country, they have the potential to become Wakanda. So yeah, so you no, know, who knows? Like uranium is basically you know the all these uh, magic metal that you know the Wakanda have and. Niger have this potential and I would love to see Niger succeed uh, but there is still a lot of hurdles but United States is still in Niger and I think I think that's the very very key thing that United States will help Niger to get the legitimacy they need in the international realm in the United Nations and uh, to deal with ECOWAS and to deal with African Union and if this ECOWAS is not able to do this military intervention uh, within the next six months to nine months, Niger might actually complete its uh, governmental uh, revolution and transition to a civilian government. They have an election, uh, go back to constitutional rule, then ECOWAS and African Union will basically avoid a bloodshed and have to accept Niger back into the fold of, the, of international recognition and uh, reconciliation so anyway thank you for watching and uh press the like button subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments and i'll see you in the next update